Howdy y'all, Los here. Welcome to another episode of Bonsai Yeah. This week we have a special presentation from our friend Brandon Baldoff from the Austin Bonsai Society. He's gonna show us the Ebi Hara technique. It's gonna be a very awesome video. I hope you're ready for it. Without further ado, here's our friend Brandon Baldoff. Let's go. What's up Austin Bonsai Society? Happy 2022, welcome to January. It is Brandon Baldoff here, former vice president and president of the club, ready to share with you guys some excellent techniques today. Hopefully you've had a wonderful holiday season and your 2022 is kicked off smashingly well. I've had a great time, visited the Hawkeye Bonsai land a couple times out in Bastrop, getting things ready out there. Got a few repots snuck in this year already. They're chilling in the greenhouse in order to uh, stay protected from the cold. And tonight we have a really special event for you. Uh, we will be exploring this maple. It's a Japanese maple. Uh, it's a specialty cultivar called the Arakawa maple. And tonight we're gonna go through and explore what the Ebihara technique is. So in essence, uh, we will be undertaking some root work and we will be digging in to apply the Ebihara technique to the root system as we look to repot this maple tonight. Ebihara is essentially the deciduous Kimura of Japan. He's a Japanese bonsai professional who has a nursery just outside of Tokyo, and he specializes in deciduous trees, specifically trident maples and Japanese maples, and he is a wizard when it comes to uh, grafting, uh, root grafting, peg grafting, branch grafting, and this technique here is a uh, technique that's named after him that he very much uh, proliferated and teaches to many people. And it allows for the uh, practitioner to basically control the direction of the roots as we are trying to cultivate uh, a thick and widespread nabari within the overall uh, design of a maple. So whenever we uh, look at this species, this is an Arakawa. So Arakawa and maples, uh, they're very much notable uh, for the bark that they have. So when you take a quick zoom in on some of the features of this maple, you'll see that the bark has a lot of gnarled and big like armor pads on it. So essentially that is one of the highlights of this species is that they get all this gnarled bark on it versus a lot of the other maples that, and cultivars of Japanese maples that are very smooth in their barking presentation. Uh, these have lots of gnarly looking features in this region. So they do really well when it comes to this technique because you're allowed to get nice wide spreading nabari that then uh, will have the barking components to it that then transitions into a nice tenigari up into the, the design of the tree at large. So we will begin tonight by essentially uh, taking this tree out of the plastic container that it's currently in and we'll be teasing out all of the soil that's in there. There's currently a amount of potting soil and various expanded shale and things of those natures, which uh, is great for developing a tree. Uh, but tonight we're gonna take it out of that. We're gonna put it in some Aoki soil, which is a Japanese pre-blended mix of pumice, black lava, and akadama. So we have some of the Aoki soil that we'll use instead of that, and the Aoki allows for the uh, roots to basically break down and uh, expand and ramify really uh, densely within the uh, akadama that's present in the Aoki, Aoki soil mix. So. We're going to pop, unpot it out of this one. We'll do a little bit of uh, trimming in areas that break off like this. Uh, these are just old cut sites that have essentially uh, desiccated and died. So we'll you know clean, clean the tree up and get it ready for a repot. We'll do some slight balancing of the energy. Uh, deciduous trees in general, as this is a Japanese maple, uh, deciduous trees, they go through the repotting process uh, in the winter time when they're dormant all of the energy is stored uh, and built up at the tips 
where you basically have these big buds that are swelling. And as we um, have the tree in a dormant state, we're able to then explore and do root work on it. We're able to cut the roots and remove the roots. And then as the tree wakes up, uh, it'll flush out and push out new buds and new leaves which then allows for the roots to grow after that. So essentially, during the dormant part of the year for deciduous trees is when you want to be doing the root work. So what we'll do is we'll take it out of here after we trim it down. We'll uh, look at some of the roots. We'll do some root trimming, and then we'll basically put this tree on a board and we'll drill the bottom of the board and the tree together so there's a strong adherence of the um, wood to the bottom of the tree and that'll force all the roots to grow laterally. Uh, we'll take some very small nails and a hammer and we'll basically tease the roots and uh, put them into positions where we want them to go where there's an even distribution of the roots across the nabari that we're looking to design and create. And then from there with the board being underneath all of those roots that are growing laterally will continue to push out and then grow up which will then start teasing above the soil line hence giving that bulbous sort of elephant foot looking uh, style that you see in Japan. Uh, after that, we'll take the board and the tree that are bound together with all the roots nicely distributed with nails and we will then put that into a bonsai pot and that will be using the nice soil that we're talking about. So as you see the um, extra pieces get cut back, uh, we'll start seeing new buds push out of these different areas as an example, there's a small bud right in this region that could grow and become a new apex for this entire tree, depending on uh, whoever is able to continue to tend to this tree moving forward. They'll get to decide how high or how low or where they want the growth to be. But essentially, as you remove things and with the Akadama soil infusion, you'll allow for a lot of ramification to develop within the newly set uh, branching. So at a at a very high level overview, that is basically the scope of work that we're going to undertake today. So thanks for being here. Uh, excited to have you in your presence. Uh, welcome from Austin, Texas. A big thanks to Roland for putting this together. And we've got Carlos and Brandon in the studio back there. So thanks for doing that. And we're excited to get started. So here we go, everybody. Nice flat, nice flat root spread that we're trying to cultivate here. And when we put it flat on my hand, essentially you can start to see where that nabari shows off. It was totally under the soil line. And then you can see where we're gonna have the nabari transition in these like three or four regions. So it'll be it'll be really cool to start to have the the base start to swell up and match sort of the, the sprawl of the canopy. I think this board technique is going to be perfect for it. So let's give it a whirl. So nothing too magical. I'm just going to use your everyday screw that you find at the, like a plank or a deck screw. And I have an impact driver here. So we're just going to basically, ooh, I would have missed. Line them up as best as we can. And voila! Your board and your and your tree are now stuck together. <laughs> so you can see you put the screw right in the middle of it. There are holes. Um, within the within the board as well to allow for drainage to go through as well as to allow for us to tie the board down to the container since we won't have to tie the roots down now we can just tie the board down and essentially yeah that's that's the magic of the ebihara technique uh, depending on what container you're going for you could you could uh, opt to have like a wider board um, for us today we've selected out this lovely blue ceramic container. Uh, there's nothing too too magical about it other than it's nice and blue and it is a bonsai pot. So these will be nice pairings here. 
essentially this will fit like that. All right, we're done. Thanks everyone, have a nice night. Uh, I'm just playing around. We're gonna definitely, um, so Roland has gone ahead and put down the tie down screens. And uh, before we put these two together, I'm gonna do a little bit of the root guidance that I was describing. So back to it. All right, so uh, now that we've cleaned up a little bit, we've got a nice root spread here. We're gonna continue to try to find uh, and cut roots that are growing straight up so we can define essentially define the top line of that Nabare where we can. And I'm wanting to move this one root right here over. Cool. So I'm wanting to move this over and out of, out of the way of this root above it. So in doing so, I'll take a small framing nail and slide it over as much as it will tolerate without breaking and then just put a small nail right there. has directionally moved over. Take this other piece that was growing up and we'll essentially cut the things underneath it. essentially where that root was going, it was moving um, this direction and up, we've moved it this way and moved it down. So now we're basically going in and micromanaging and positioning the roots exactly where we want them to be. So you'll do that in a complete radius around the tree in favor of positioning the roots where you feel like they need to go. And as we find roots that are still on the top, we can continue to remove those in favor of what could be below. We can also clip things that are still a little bit long. This root up above it, this root on, root on top here, it is essentially something I think we want to remove for the one right below it. So in this one scenario, you have two roots that are going in the same direction. So just clip the one on top, remove that, and now we're giving favor to these ones below it. And they're kind of in competing, this, these two here. So we can either remove the one below and then nail this one down, or we can try to position them in different parts. So let's just use two, two nails. One will have this one go, this bottom root go towards the right, and then the top one will have the go towards the left, and we'll fill in these spots. So now we've positioned three roots in a radial pattern. Uh, now we have this large root that has a nice transition into the nabari and trunk. I'm gonna remove some of the excessive length. And we want this to kind of 
go down where we can. And keep removing stuff underneath on the bottom. Any competing stuff on this side. This, this uh, one root here to kind of grow down is what we're aiming for. It might be hard to do with this specific. You know what? You could honestly remove it entirely in favor of the one below it, but I feel like that might be a lot of uh, damage right at that one critical spot to heal over. So you could cut that back. It's probably the size of a pencil wound that would take a while to heal. So we'll leave that there. I am gonna try to put a nail to let it hold down though, so it's not growing out and it's growing more down. Let's see how that looks, and how that works. Yeah, I'm not sure I can pull it off with these nails in this, in this situation here. Okay, so I guess what I would want to do is basically guy wire, guy wire that and try to pull it in tight. We'll leave that for today. Just gonna trim it a little bit. Okay. I'll position one of these out here though to keep it going away from the other pieces. Okay, so we're kind of having this one stay over this direction towards the my right hand side and then continuing on the other half of the tree continuing to tease out any remaining potting soil if i was at the studio we definitely would have given this a quick so like wash in the sink get rid of any of that excessive dirt and i think we can take this root and kind of move it away from the other ones as well. So bifurcate so we can put a nail in each of these bifurcation roots. So we'll take one nail and yeah Roland you want to give me a quick hand just to nail this down properly. So what you'll want to do is just put pressure right there so you can hold that down. Yep. bending this way. So I bent the... This root was moving in this direction, so now we moved it this way. And what I'll actually do is take the, the extended part of that and I'll bend it the other way. And then put a nail in that. the bifurcation piece that I'm trying to have separation from, I will move it in the other direction with two nails as well. I'm trying to create motion, create separation and distance between the roots. So that way, as they they grow, they're following the path, they're following the separation that you designed, and with them being flat against that board, they're gonna grow out and swell up towards the top of the soil line. So that's that's exactly what we're aiming for. I'm gonna keep trying to tap any dirt away. A pro tip that you'll learn from reading the internet is to not use plywood, essentially. Uh, plywood doesn't last very long when it comes to the, the bottom board. So if you use plywood, you'll end up having the plywood decompose and causing some of those conditions that you're talking about, like keeping dead roots in there. So you're gonna try to avoid the plywood. And there's a pretty thick clumping of roots underneath this one. 
so I feel like we can take the top one off since it's not super thick. Just continue to peel away and see what's underneath there. There's a whole bunch of really fine roots in this, in this region, which leads me to believe it wants to, wants to grow a lot from here. There's a really thick one at the very bottom that I just removed. About that thick. So that was like uh, underneath the things and potentially this could have been a good candidate for being the one that we cut back to if that big thick piece extended and said it branched off and has like a little de like dead desiccated spot. So we'll remove that. We'll uh, ideally remove enough to get down to the bifurcation. So you want two. Two, only two major roots to be growing from this spot. Again, pulled something from the bottom. And now that we can see what we're working with a little bit more, this one is not a very pretty root. Okay, so now we have less options, which is helpful. There's another big thick one on the bottom. This one over this, the, the far left one on the on the far left side where it's wanting to go naturally, and then there's a ton of just little fibrous ones that I'm going to try and kind of reduce back selectively. I'm going to keep some roots on this tree so that it stays alive. Okay, so we'll start nailing some of these down. Get rid of some of these extra roots. Right. Then lastly, we have this mess of roots over here. I'm gonna clip some of this stuff from the top. almost the one that we could like remove but then there's like a pretty big scar there to heal over. It isn't very pretty though and the base right below it is pretty rad so that's a tough one. We're gonna leave it for today but I do believe that this root that's sitting up here at the top could be removed in favor of what's beneath it but for today we'll leave it and that can be a decision that gets made in the future. I feel like I've removed a lot of roots today. Excited to get this one into the pot. Okay, just these last three. Just kind of space them out evenly. Okay, one more nail, and we are set. All right, so now we have distributed all of the roots uh, where we want them for for this tree. So it'll help cultivate the nabari and set directionality for the roots. And we'll put that into a bonsai pot next. Awesome. So back at it. We're gonna do the potting process now that we got all of the roots organized and aligned. So for the repotting here, essentially gonna create some tie down wires. Add some tie down wires to the bottom. I use uh, stainless steel tie down wires. Uh, they're it's pretty tough and resistant metal but it, it i find it works really well uh, compared to copper which is expensive and then compared to aluminum which kind of has a tendency when you're pinching 
the wire down to break. Uh, it also stretches as the aluminum kind of just like expands and isn't as strong of a metal as steel. This uh, stainless steel kind of tied on wire is real strong. Okay, so for this one, usually I do a, like, so for doing tie downs, I usually do a five point Kathy Shaner tie down. Since we're using the board, we're just gonna use four, um, four points, and then we'll feed it through, ah! Feed it through some of these holes as we place it in there. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's gonna sit a little bit low if we put it flush. So I'd like for it to sit up a little bit. So we're gonna put in a little bit of like uh, some pumice here. So this is basically just sifted pumice that we'll use as a drainage layer in the very bottom. And then I have nicely sifted clearly. Then I have some uh, some bonsai mix here. This is essentially um, APL, Akadama pumice and lava mixed together. Um, so we'll put some of that above the pumice. And I'll place the board on that. And we'll tie it down. Just get a nice even distribution. A little bit of grow media on top of the pumice there. Then we'll place it. We're not gonna get the best front today due to how the board fits in here. But know that this is just a temporary position. Okay, so we'll give that a water and then add a little bit of moss on top for some coloring, but in, in a nutshell, that is what we're aiming for. We have the front of the tree is kind of in this in this region, so we're we're cattywampus from how it's need to be presented in the container. But simultaneously, we've set the roots up for a really healthy Nibari cultivation. We've set the top up to uh, redistribute and uh, grow new branching and ramification. Uh, it's in really quality soil for bonsai, and it's in a bonsai pot. So um, definitely, we can appreciate the tree maybe from this front for a little bit, knowing that it breaks some rules, it's leaning backwards, uh, or we can just appreciate it for, for as it is. Um, theoretically, we could have looked at uh, using a board, using a larger container to get to the perfect front for this tree, but it is, in my mind, all about the iterative process and uh, applying the best technique you can at that moment. So uh, without further ado, thank you and enjoy. Thank you, Brandon Baldoff, Roland Lopez, and the Austin Bonsai Society. Thank you for watching at home. If you like our content, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. We'll see you guys next week. So, in the meantime, be cool, stay hip. Get yourself a hobby. Bye.